Okay, so let us continue with our differentiation uh, in this video. And then um, the topic that we are going to discuss for this part is actually something new uh, to most of us. Okay, and we call it as implicit functions uh, or maybe we will call it as implicit differentiation. Okay, so um, let us have a look for some very basic uh, introduction about this implicit function first. Okay, so if you uh, look at the notes, uh, they, they say that there are some curves have equations that cannot easily be written as this one. Okay, so for, for all the while, right, for most of the example or most of the question that we learn, the equation we can write in terms of y in terms of x, uh, such as y equals to something something x. Okay, y equals to fx. So for example, uh, it is difficult to isolate y in the equation this one. So there are some equations that cannot be easily separated into y equals to something something x. So this is all the example. So if you have this kind of equation, right, no matter how you try, actually you cannot write y on the left equals to something something x on the right. No matter how you try to rephrase it, it is impossible to happen. Or maybe it will be very hard. All right? you, might, you may need to carry out a lot of things so that you can change it, become y equals to something something x. And there are some totally cannot be separated. One. Okay? So this kind of function, usually we'll call it as implicit function. Okay? So when you can actually um, separate y, on at the left hand side and also equals to x on the right hand side so that one generally we call it as explicit function okay so all the while we are learning explicit function now. okay so now we're going to introduce the implicit function here okay so when you're having an implicit function right when you want to do the differentiation it will become harder because usually for this kind of function right when you want to do the differentiation it's very simple like the y you change it become dy dx oh? Then you just differentiate the x followed by what you have uh, according to the rules that we learned. But the different thing for the implicit differentiation is you don't have, you cannot separate the y on the left. Okay, so what will happen to y square? How can you differentiate the y square? How can you differentiate the y? And so on. Right, so when you want to do the differentiation for implicit function, generally, first thing you need to know is uh, when you want to differentiate any function with the y, okay, you do the you follow the rules that we learned before for the differentiation and after that at the end okay of the term after you do the differentiation you need to put in dy dx uh. okay because this is actually in terms of y right so when you want to do the differentiation towards the x you have to write dy dx at the back okay so this is in general uh, that means when you want to do any implicit differentiation this is something extra that you need to know Okay, so the implicit equation with the terms involved involve both x and y will become more complicated when the differentiation is carried out. So again, you know, it will become more complicated. The quotient rule or product rule should be, should be used sometimes in conjunction with the chain rule. So when we introduce implicit differentiation, right, um, there are some questions can be quite complicated, right? Especially if, let's say, you cannot separate the x and y, and then you have to uh, use product or quotient rule. Uh, then sometimes when you rephrase the answer, it looks quite, quite, not to say, uh, how to say, uh, not to say very hard, but I will say that it looks complicated. No? All right? Okay, so this is what we have for implicit differentiation. Okay, so now, example 14. So for example 14, they want to find the dy dx for all the following questions here. So you can see that there are a lot of questions here. Um, I will discuss a few examples with you and then uh, you have to try it out on your own now for the rest that I didn't discuss it with you. Okay, so for me, I will choose a few questions. I will start with part A. I will discuss part A with you. And after that, maybe I will discuss part D and also I will discuss part F. I will discuss these three parts with you and then the rest of the uh, question you try on your own. Yeah. All right, so hopefully from this free example, you will roughly know an idea about the implicit differentiation. Okay, so let us start with part A. Okay, when you're having this equation, right, y power 3 plus 6x equals to x squared, when you want to do the differentiation, generally very easy. You differentiate it terms by terms. Okay, so when you want to do y power 3, okay, what do you have for y power 3 when you differentiate it? You just apply the rules, the differentiation rules that you learned before. Okay, 
So we want to differentiate y power 3. That means the 3 you put in front, right? The power you put in front, you copy the y, the power minus 1 become 2. So you're having 3y squared. Okay, so because this differentiation, it is something related to y. Therefore, when you want to do the differentiation, right, you also need to consider that you should have something with dy dx at, at, the, at the back. You have to multiply the dy dx because this is something related to y. So you have 3y squared dy dx. Okay, so plus 6x. When you want to differentiate 6x, 6x what do you have? You have 6. Okay, and because this is something related to x, therefore we will have dx over dx. Okay, then equals to, you just copy equals to, now you want to differentiate x squared. So when you want to differentiate x squared, you get 2x. And then this differentiation is about x. Ah. All right, so I need to write out dx over dx also. Okay, so generally, ah, last time when you learn the differentiation, right, you should write out the dx over dx also. Ah. Just like you want to save time and then we want to make students very confused. So we just tell the student, okay, when you differentiate y, you get dy dx. Ah. Then when you get the x, you just follow the rule. But actually, at the end of every single term, you have to put in the, the x, the x one, according to what we have here. Lah. So you differentiate y, so you should have dy, dx. When you differentiate the x, you have, should have dx, dx. Okay? When you differentiate two x, uh, the x squared, also you have dx, dx. Okay? And then you will see that when you write out dx, dx, ah, actually it is 1. So usually we didn't write. Can you see that or not? All right, so that's why, that is the reason why we usually didn't write out the dx dx in our steps. So we write as a 6 only, and then this one equals to 2x only. Okay, so actually the concept is the same one. When you differentiate anything related to y, so you write in dy dx at the end of the term. So this one should have dx dx, this one also should have dx dx, uh, and then dx dx equals to 1. And therefore, you, do, you, you simplify it, and therefore you didn't see any dx here anymore. Okay, so in this question, we actually want to find out the dy dx one, right? So what you need to do is you need to rephrase your answer. So what is your dy dx here? So dy dx equals to 2x minus 6 divided by 3y squared. So this will be your dy dx. Okay, I don't think that it is hard. Lah. It's actually quite quite okay one. As long as you know the concept here. Okay, all right. So uh, let us have a look for the answer for dy dx lah, when you have an implicit function. Okay, previously, last time uh, when you learn all the differentiation, right, your answer for dy dx, uh, there's only x in your answer. dy dx equals to something, something x. Okay, but for implicit function, you will see that your answer is a bit special uh, because in your answer of dy dx, uh, besides the x, you also have y in your answer. Okay, because of your having y in your answer also, therefore, when you want to apply all the implicit differentiation in the application questions are uh, like find out the maximum and minimum, find out the equation of tangent and everything, right? It will become much more complicated. So that's the reason. Uh, okay, so uh, please be aware of this. Uh, all right, so your answer for dy dx in implicit differentiation should have x and y. Should have uh, Okay, so this is what I have for part A. Okay, so for this part A, you will see that I did the equation terms by terms. Okay, so I'm having first term here, y power 3, followed by the second term, 6x, followed by the third one, which is x squared. So you just apply the rules that you learned before in differentiation. Okay, so this one should be quite simple. Lah. So part B and part C are all, all the same also. You can differentiate term by term. Okay, all right. After that, maybe you can try part D. Okay, so if you look at part D, part D is a bit different because of if you look at it, uh, it is actually having x squared multiplied with y power 3 equals to 72. So if you look at this term, actually x squared belongs to one bracket, y power 3 belongs to another bracket. So you are having two brackets here actually, and you want to differentiate the function with two brackets, you need to apply the product rule. Okay, so the product rule can be applied also in implicit differentiation. Okay, so when you have when you want to apply the product happen here. Okay, so first you copy the first bracket, so you copy the first bracket, differentiate the second bracket. So when you differentiate y power three, what do you get? You will get three y squared. 
because you are differentiating something related to y, right? So you have to put dy dx at the end of your term. So this is the copy the first bracket, differentiate the second. And then plus, now you want to copy the second bracket, differentiate the first. So differentiate x squared, what you have? You have 2x. And then you should have a dx dx. Okay, but I didn't write it out because it is equals to 1. Therefore, I didn't write it out. And then equals to, so you complete your product root here already. Okay, differentiate a number, what do you get? So differentiate a number, you should get a 0. Can I understand? Alright, so generally, everything is the same. Just that when you want to do the differentiation that is related to y, at the end of the term, you just multiply it with dy dx only. So this is why you call it as implicit differentiation. Okay, so you can try to rephrase your answer. So what do I get for my dy dx here? Okay, so I'm having negative 2xy power 3 divided by 3x squared y squared. Okay, and then you can try to define your answer, which is 2 over 3. And then you should have oh, 2y over 3x. Okay, so you should have negative 2y over 3x. So this will be the answer for your differentiation for part D. All right, okay. Okay, so if no problem, then we continue again to part F. Okay, so for part F, you are having tangent bracket x plus y equals to y squared. So how can we do the differentiation? So again, tangent mean function. So differentiate tangent, what do you get? You get secant squared. Copy the bracket. Okay, so tangent means secant squared. Copy the answer, copy the angle. And after that, you need to multiply with the differentiation of the angle. So when you differentiate the angle, right? Differentiate x, you will get a 1. And then dx, dx. Plus, differentiate y. What do you get? You also have a 1. But you need to put a dy, dx here, right? Because you are, uh, you are differentiating the y. Okay? And then equals to, equals to what? So differentiate y square now. Differentiate y square, you will have 2y. And then you should have dy dx here as well. Okay? Alright, so now again, this question, the answer that they want is dy dx. Now. So you're having two dy dx here. One dy dx here, another dy dx here. So which means that now you need to try to trace every dy dx at the same side. So to rephrase it, right, I think no choice of the secant square, you have to multiply with the bracket one. You also need to multiply into the dy dx. So if you expand it, you will have secant square x plus y plus it is something like you multiply into the bracket and expand it. So plus you are having dy dx multiply with secant square x plus y and it is equal to 2y dy over dx. Okay, so again, I want to rephrase all my um, dy dx at one side. Lah. So what I'm going to do now is I will keep the secant square x plus y here and then I will move it to 2y dy dx minus dy dx secant square and then from here you will see that actually you can try to factorize out the dy dx right okay so you try to factorize out the dy dx left hand side you have secant square x plus y and from here you have the dx equals to secant square x plus y divided by 2y minus secant square x plus y. Okay, so this is what we have uh, as the answer for the implicit differentiation for this question. Okay, so again, to make sure that you, uh, you understand this very well, you have to make that your basic differentiation about all the function and also how to apply all the rules are like product rules are quotient rules very well. That only you can 
uh, managed to get the answer correctly easily here. Okay, so uh, this is the three these are the three questions that I would like to discuss it with you. So the first question is about plus and minus one. That means you can differentiate term by term. Second example here, we are applying product rule because you're having x squared multiplied with y power 3. So there are two brackets here, therefore you should apply the product rule. Okay. Then for this one, it is related to trigo. All right. But when you want to do the differentiation for trigo, just make sure that you know the rules very well for the trigo part. Okay. So the rest of the example, I would like you to try out on your own. I will give you the final answer here, and then please try to rephrase it into the answer that I show you. Okay? All right, so I will give you the answer now. Uh, B, C, E, G, H. All right, so you can pause the video now for a while, and then you can try it out. Okay, so for part B. Part B, this is the answer. All right, then part C. Okay, part D. Part D, I discussed it with you already. Then continue with part number E. Okay, if I discuss it with you, and then G. And also part H. Okay, so please make sure that you try the, all this example and then try to get the answer that I showed you here. Okay, so you have to think about if I say your answer is a bit different from what I shown, then maybe you can try to figure out why, how to change it become the pattern that I want. Okay, so this is what you have in basic differentiation and all these are basic to make sure that um, you actually understand how to apply all the rules that you learned before in the basic differentiation. Okay, so I will stop here for this video and then in the next video, I'm going to discuss with you lah. Um, how to use the differentiation for implicit function to apply it in the application question, such as find out the uh, equation of tangent, uh, how to find the maximum or minimum, and so on. All right.